many times the desired success cannot be achieved despite making a diligent effort with great patience in reality our accumulated bad karmas pose obstacles in the way of achieving success whether it is an endeavor made towards worldly success or a sadhana done for spiritual development desired success can be easily achieved if it is possible to resolve the effects of bad karmas the same is true about the long delayed rewards of the sustained meritorious karmas if accumulated bad karmas can be mitigated or eradicated the stream of beneficial rewards would start flowing once again the same way as a water stream obstructed by a boulder start flowing again upon its removal Pandit Shri Ram Sharma Acharya Book title Brahma Varchas ki Panchangni Vidya The Panchangni Vidya of Brahma Varchas Book Introduction Human is the best creation and the replica of Parmatma the supreme being and has inherited all the distinctions however most of them lie in a dormant form A person needs to develop their suitability and awaken the dormant powers. Those who can make it happen would see the new avenues of worldly and spiritual accomplishments opening up. There are many sadhanas or spiritual practices that could help in the process. Sadhanas can be likened to a body and the inner excellence in life as its soul. Both together can produce miraculous results therefore the sadhana needs to be such that an observances involved in it are essentially accompanied by inner disciplining and inner brilliance then and then only it could enable the seeker to have a life full of worldly and spiritual accomplishments brahma varcha sadhana adequately takes care of both these aspects and therefore guarantees success it is a well coordinated combination of thinking and action knowledge and deeds wisdom and courage yoga and tap faith and action eradication of unworthy elements nurturing worthy elements etc this book is an in-depth guidance manual especially for those to take part in special camps of Brahma Varcha Sadhana, a high-level Gayatri Sadhana aimed at comprehensive self-development. It would serve as a very helpful guide for the participants to continue their self-development after attending the camp. However, this book is such a mine of information that could be useful to anyone who may wish to delve into the subject and benefit from it the book describes the principles practices and benefits of various elements of brahma varcha sadhana namely gayatri mantra chanting and meditation soham sadhana tratak kechri mudra shakti sanchar sadhana various pranayams and asanas and other yogic practices chandrayan tap and some essential spiritual observances few excerpts from the book number 1 the principles of sadhana would seem to be exaggerated and embellished only when people disregard its crucial element of self refinement and dream of having miraculous achievements only by performing some rituals and observances number 2 the advanced level of gayatri worship is known as brahma varchas it is a combination of two words namely brahma and varchas the word brahma stands from brahma vidya meaning knowledge or true awareness about the divine and the word varchas means brilliance or divine brilliance in this way brahma virtues has two aspects first brahma vidya indicates the refinement of outlook and actions and conduct 
and the philosophy and knowledge of the self. Second, virtuous indicates awakening the inner dormant powers and augmenting brilliance. Thus, Brahma virtuous is a comprehensive spirituality in which realizing the soul as well as enhancing spiritual brilliance are both included in an equal and ample proportion. Number three, Brahma virtuous sadhana involves the worship of and training for attaining Brahma vidya or true awareness about the divine and Brahma tej or divine brilliance. The methodical worship of Savita, the divine consciousness and divine brilliance and that of its divine power. Savitri will equip the seeker with power, knowledge, righteous intellect, utmost wisdom, farsightedness, and greatness. Brahma Varcha Sadhana or training routine involves sequential steps which resemble the process of cleansing and dyeing the fabric. Naturally, the indispensable element of this sadhana is a preliminary cleansing exercise in the form of atoning for and rectifying any unfavorable sanskars or inherent impressions accumulated from previous life, which are the greatest impediments to making any spiritual progress. Number 4. Brahma Virtuous Sadhana is capable of producing immense spiritual power by means of the seeker making an effort. The sadhana venue and its surroundings, brimming with favorable spiritual merits, the comprehensive nature of the sadhana method, and the seeker receiving personal divine protection, guidance, knowledge, and divine grant. To facilitate the development of these spiritual powers, the seekers are required to get rid of any unworthy attributes they may have in their thinking, character, and conduct so that any spiritual powers which have so far been clogged up with these vices would start to grow fast once again. The seekers have to observe spiritual austerity to receive these spiritual powers and divine brilliance. Brahma Virtua Sadhana sessions have adequate provision of guidance and information to help the seekers. Number 5. Cleansing a sewer emits such a foul smell that it would be unbearable. The same is true when cleansing the mind. It would start to rebel as soon as you begin to subdue it. The task of crushing its rebellion may be difficult but not impossible. Self-refinement is not possible without cleansing the mind. Self-refinement is the first and the foremost condition to realize Brahma virtues or divine brilliance. Therefore, each and every aspirant seeking self-mastery must put up with any hardship at any cost. Number 6. What is the reason for the differences seen among various individuals? Its definite answer is that those who explore only the superficial levels of life would get nothing but the fields. But those who dare to dig deeper within would get precious achievements one after another. In spiritual terms, this act of exploring in greater depth is known as sadhana. Whose sadhana should be performed? It should be that of life. The life is an evident wish tree. The more a person trains and properly utilizes their life, the more fulfilled they will be. Number 7. One has to sow and harvest the crop himself on their farm and have any useful earning from it. It happens only through one's own individual effort. Is there anyone who has been able to do well with outside help? In the same way, one has to work towards improving their personal suitability by making the outer life well organized and the inner life well refined. The act of making life well organized is known as tapa. 
and making it well refined is known as yoga these are the only two fields of sadhana the outer life needs to be molded to make it conform to civility and the inner life needs to be refined through conscious efforts this is the philosophy of sadhana number 8 Spiritual betterment is also a specialized process to be able to earn divine gifts. Attaining success in it involves the same principles that apply to any worldly success. The seeker would adore his life as if it were a deity and take care of his life's inner and outer aspects and make them better. Everything in both these aspects of life would generally remain unrefined the high minded outlook and effort would make them beautiful and well organized number 9 the mind gets soiled with dirt and wickedness because of the influence of the surroundings setting up a routine of daily worship will take care of cleansing it all daily routines are generally meant to eradicate such dirt setting on the mind These daily routines have their own importance and utility. However, when one needs to acquire the extra spiritual capability to do something more, they will have a resolutely undertake some special methods of worship together with some designated measures of self-restraint and austerity. These are known as anushthan. Number 10. Our scriptures say that Everyone is born as shudra meaning an uncultivated person therefore sanskaras or favorable tendencies would make them a dvija meaning a person who is born again or a reformed personality in fact these inherent tendencies transform an uncultivated person into a cultivated person or the other way round The person who integrates the wisdom of Gayatri would see such favorable inherent tendencies developing within and turning them into an extraordinary person. Number 11. Any harm inflicted by human beings can be known as enmity, invasion, cruelty, revenge, etc. However, incidents do happen. where we cannot see any person's involvement and disasters do turn up unexpectedly if we were not to label them as disorderliness in god system the only satisfactory answer to explain their happening would be the consequences of the accumulated past karmas our rishis have called it by various names like karma prarabdh or destiny bhagya or fate paripak or dormant karmas becoming evident and so on number 12 it is the accumulated karmas of a person that manifest as his or her bad destiny in other words the destiny is the consequence of accumulated past karmas one may face later day these karmas could be from the current life or the previous life These accumulated past karmas are our own making and stay with us. It is not within our control to change them. The consequence of any karma is inevitable, but its direction can be changed. They can also be mitigated and resolved. Number 13. Even though one has to suffer the consequences of karmas, there are ways to mitigate or resolve them. which our scriptures have termed as prayaschit or atonement. Ramavarta sadhanas also have a provision for atonement or mitigating and resolving any past wrongdoings so that one could move ahead on the path of a spiritual progress with success and certainty. Number 14. The scriptures have shown many methods of atonement but have given prominence to chandrayaan tap. The process of atonement has two aspects. One is to rectify the mistake made and the other is refinement. In this sadhana, the inherent evil tendencies and impressions get mitigated 
and at the same time some solid efforts are also initiated for spiritual elevation both these tasks are accomplished in chandrayaan sadhana number 15 when pursuing the path of sadhana all the important successes associated with spiritual progress one may achieve are known as siddhis or vibhuti meaning spiritual accomplishments or divine gifts they can only be attained when the processes of atma shodhan or self refinement and atma vikas or self development are both carried out together number 16 god cannot be deceived into showing favors to the flattery of chanting his name it would be a stupid idea to think that someone could reap all the rewards gained by those who walk on a righteous path merely by offering ritualistic worship to god the god shouldn't be considered stupid and petty who would regard someone as his devotee just because the person is chanting his name and start giving him desired rewards his favors can only be gained by refining the character and walking on the path of righteousness number 17 chanting god's name is one of the main elements of upasana or methodical worship chanting makes us aware of and reminds us about the existence of the divine authority we make use of the chanting to have god etched into our minds or memory remembering or chanting his name leads to an invitation and invitation leads to installing and installing leads to attainment this sequence is also recognized by psychology number 18 apathy for one's own physical capabilities implies laziness the tendency to not utilize one's own mental competence implies carelessness It is a well-known fact that laziness and carelessness are more or less responsible for man's poverty and misery. The restlessness of the mind is the genesis of both of these great enemies. The purpose of meditation is to gain an expertise of taming the restless mind and focusing it on some desired goal. This is what is known as manonigra or control of the mind. Number 19 By and large only a small portion of man's inherent divine capabilities remain activated which enables him to manage his ordinary life routine of feeding or eating and procreation the treasure of the rest of the divine capabilities remains dormant and needs to be activated through conscious efforts we do hear every now and then about paranormal capabilities and see many people with extraordinary capabilities these are the result of the effort they made to awaken them in either their current life or previous lives they would make an ordinary individual soul incrementally develop into a great soul a divine soul and the soul of god's stature thus growing from a trivial entity to a great entity such accomplishments aren't gifted by others or attained through others favors but are the result of a mental spiritual development of a person number 20 man's physical subtle and causal body have so many amazing power centers which excel one another they offer such potentials that can transform an uneducated individual into a knowledgeable one and an incapable individual into an extraordinarily capable one it is a matter of transforming the state of dormancy into that of the awakening any efforts made to enable these are known as yoga sadhanas or practices number 21 The aim of Tratak or the yogic exercise of steady gazing is to enlighten divine vision which can enable the person to have a glimpse into the subtle or invisible world to dig out and get hold of divine treasure within 
and to become familiar with the unknown and the invisible going beyond any physical limits of time location and the body the physical eyes can help us see and know only obvious things but the divine vision can help us to dive within a soul and bring about such a transformation which could change the stature and manifestation of life number 22 the miraculous purpose of soham sadhana is in no way any less significant this is one of the major sadhanas of prana yoga the science of yoga describes the procedure benefits and results of 10 major and 54 minor and hence 64 pranayams the pran yoga of soham sadhana is the best and the foremost among all of them number 23 instilling the spirit of dharma into each and every element of life and activity of daily routine is the peculiarity of indian dharma and culture the spirit of dharma implies having a deep gratitude towards god the individual would see the life as god's blessing and priceless gift to help remember this truth throughout the great indian visionary thinkers have integrated remembering god and pious feelings into each and every task of the day right from waking up in the early morning to going to sleep at night there are specific observances to focus on to respective pious feelings and remembering god when waking up in the morning and sitting up getting out of the bed and stepping on to the floor performing personal hygiene routines having shower having meal and other essential tasks few topics covered in book art brahmavarta sadhana why and how the importance of the place and its spiritual ambience for sadhana human destiny and the way to mitigate or resolve it chandrayaan vrat atonement process gayatri mantra anushthan principles practices and benefits pratap to awaken the potential of divine vision soham sadhana hans yoga khichri mudra to enjoy spiritual bliss and enthusiasm shakti sanchar sadhana dharm in everyday life routine